Hi everybody, it's Friday night and it's live with Kat of Kat's Creations. I want to welcome you into my kitchen and thank you for joining me today. Um, we are going to be doing a dragonfly wreath. It's taken me a little bit of time to get all the things that I wanted in order to create this and then of course looking at different color schemes, looking at dragonflies in real life and trying to make sure that it kind of matches it as close as possible. And then of course deciding, do you want to do grapevine? Do you want to do deco mesh? We're not doing evergreen because man, once we start moving into the fall, that's pretty much all it'll ever be. But um, I want to thank you and welcome those of you that are joining me live right now, which are? Uh, Debbie DeJohn Wallace. Hi Debbie. Debbie Davis. Hi Debbie. Deborah Crawford. Hi Deborah. <laughs> The D's are in charge today. Uh, Charlene. Hi, Charlene. Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Deanna Mustachio. Hi, Deanna. Hi, Deanna. Marie Kraft. Hi, Marie. Um, Diane Sexton. Hi, Diane. And Kathy Brown. Deb Doherty. Peggy. Pat. A lot of people still join. Okay. Well, welcome to the kitchen on Friday night. We're going to start. Um, the color scheme is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be blues and greens. Um, we played with a bunch of different colors last night. I think we we sat here for what like a couple hours trying a bunch of different things like we would yeah. like The way certain elements went into effect, but then you'd look at the sign and the sign is still white So the sign that we're using tonight is this one that says Dragonflies are sent as a sign from above to share Wait a minute to show to us show us we're cared, cared for. for Wait in the thing and to tell us we're left. Yep. So I ordered the sign from personally yours. This is a six by six sign and you can also get it in an eight by eight. So just a little bit bigger sign wise. Um, so this is not going to be the traditional put the sign in the middle kind of thing. We're going to kind of put it off center. Yep. So what's up babe? No, and just a lot, of, a lot of people still joining. I have Steve, hi. Steve's here tonight. So Steve's going to be able to once we start working he can yep. do the zoom in for me. Connie, Pat, Christine, Diane, oh, she sorry said hello. Sandra <laughs> Hughes, um, Jeannie. Hi. And Johanne, she said, hey, from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Awesome, I love to have our neighbors from up north. Yep, and Ruth from uh, from Newfoundland's on. Hi, Ruth. Debbie Davis, she said, I think the D's are out in full force. They are. Uh, Linda, Denise Cruz. Hi, Linda, hi, Denise. Connie, Carolyn, you. Shirley, Audrey, Brenda, Victoria, and Diane. Well, thank you guys for joining. <laughs> if you're new and this is the first time that you're catching us live, make sure that at the end of the video, you like and follow this page. And then that way Facebook will notify you whenever we go live, which is Fridays and Sundays at 5 p.m. Always the same time, always the same days, unless I give advance notice saying, which I haven't done yet, um, that we won't be able to do something. So with that being said, we are going to launch into our tutorial. So we're using the 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. If your Dollar Tree does not have these available, go online and make sure that um, you'll, give, you'll be given two options with Dollar Tree online. One is that you can save yourself the shipping and you can go to your nearest store and it will usually say you can also pick these up free at your local store. Here's the address. So you have the option to go for shipping or you can just have them shipped to you. Um, since those, ours is local, I don't know what the shipping fee is, but you buy them by the case. So you get 24 of the 14 inch wreath rings. In any case, so $24 plus whatever tax is. But it's really good because then you have 24 available wreaths that you're able to make and you don't have to worry about going out and running around. What's up, babe? Not much, just still people logging in. A lot of people said they loved uh, seeing us the Cracker Barrel live that we did. Oh, wasn't that crazy? Yesterday. We were so afraid we were going to get in trouble <laughs> for like walking around because it's so loud in there that we had to like, I was telling Steve, like come closer so I can narrate or um, there was just so much amazing stuff to share yeah. with you. Brenda said she went to Cracker Barrel today and stocked up after seeing our live last night. Oh, very cool. See Cracker Barrel? Our, our lives are actually beneficial. Yep. Did you guys all like bacon? And that is his actual last name. Last name. So I was asking Kaylee last night. I'm like, we referred. I mean, that's what his name tag says is bacon. I'm like, what's with the bacon? She said that's his last name. So I don't know. It's 
kind of like something that he does within Cracker Barrel. Makes yep. it fun. And then Vic Victoria said, hey, they're on a Friday night. Her kinders wore her out this week. Oh, so she must have been <laughs> really busy. As moms, we are super, super busy. Yep. Okay, so back to work. 14-inch um, Dollar Tree wreath frame. It's comprised of six different sections, and I know it's kind of hard to see it here with as many pipe cleaners as I have going around, but there are six sections to a 14-inch wreath frame from Dollar Tree with four rails that go all the way around. And the way that I lay mine out is I put a Chanel stem, pipe cleaner, fuzzy stick, whatever you want to call it, um, in between each section in the middle. So there's going to be six on the six sections. And I'm going to show you how we do it this way. We're going to, and this is where Steve's going to zoom in. So bye-bye. You'll just see my hands now. <laughs> and I'll wait. Are you there? Make sure you're good. You got some yep. good focus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are going to wire together. I, I number them. So this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So in between our weld marks or our sections, we're going to put our first Chanel stem wiring together one and two. And this is where you're going to put probably the most tension on your entire wreath is just um, making sure these are wired really well. Now be careful because on the Dollar Tree wreath frames, um, sometimes they have the, the wires welded together and it's in the middle of a section. So just be cautious on that one. Don't overly um, tighten it because you might pop the weld and then there's no way to fix that. So we put the one in between and then we're also going to add two to the outside wiring together rails three and four. And the reason why I put them between two or wire two of the rails together is it creates that tension on the pipe cleaner that prevents your chenille stem from moving on your wreath frame. They stay pretty sturdy. Now, they won't be completely, immo um, em what do you call it, immobile? Yeah. Not moving, yeah. um, because it is a painted surface. So if you push on it hard enough, you can get it to move. But what this does is it creates a work wreath frame for us that has six inner and then 12 on the outside. Yep. So we're doing the easy method today. So we're scrunching, ruffling, bow tie, however you want to call it. So I'm gonna zoom back up. Yeah. Well, yes and no. So these are the colors we're gonna be doing. So these all came from Craft Outlet. This is the 10 inch deco mesh. It's the basic one from Craft Outlet. So it's called moss green. This is cut to 15 inch pieces. And this is where I'm going to be laying down my base color. So this is my base. Lee is on from Personally Yours. Hi Lee. Hi Lee, we're doing your sign today. Absolutely love it. We've had so many requests from people who want the dragonfly sign. Yep. So Lee is who you guys are gonna go through if you want to purchase that sign. And Shirley said, hey Kat, this is my first time watching live. I just found you last week from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Wow, thank you. How did you how did you hear about us? I'm always anxious to see how do people find us. A lot of newbies find us from um, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, because yeah. we have our YouTube channel. And yep. then what we're going to do is we're going to come back in with this metallic. It's called Moss Green Apple Metallic Green. So this is going to be our ruffle on top. And then we're going to alternate that between a, um, I think this one's just called Metallic Blue. Mm -hmm. Be careful because there's a royal navy metallic blue and that goes really dark i mean it's almost like a blackish blue yeah. so we didn't want to go that dark so what i always tell you to do especially for people who are new but i do it all the time in order to help me determine how much material am i going to need we create a mock-up and a mock-up is basically just taking one of our dollar tree wreath frames that maybe one of the welds are, are busted so i'm not going to be able to use them and we create a template of sorts that will help me determine do I like this look so this is what we were playing with a lot last night we laid down uh, the tan uh, poly jeep deco mesh we laid that one down first and then put the greens on top of it I think we had like four different color greens mm -hmm. um, we would either like to go the darker darker greens darker browns but then when we put the sign up to it we're like the sign's too light. 
we have to go lighter. We have to pull some element from that sign mm -hmm. into our wreath. Otherwise, it's going to just totally stick out, which isn't what we want. So, just as a fluke thing, we decided, let's just throw blue into the mix. Let's just see how that goes. And so, we tried the dark royal navy blue, which is too dark. It was like almost black. And then we did the royal navy, or just the metallic blue, which is like the color of... I don't know, water, if it's really deep and it's crystal clear. And then we played with our ribbon choices. We went through, I think, I don't know, 10 different ribbon styles. But once you do this, like the only amount of ribbon that I wasted was one deco mesh piece, one 10 or 12 inch ribbon, and that was it in a variety of different styles. So instead of me carving up that entire 30 foot roll, I'm only taking one piece off of it to see, do I like this length? Do I like the depth of color? And as you can see, I wanted it deeper. So if we would have just put this on, it's very sheer. You would have seen the frame beneath. So we thought we would thicken it up with the darker green mesh. So that gave us the, this color that you're going to see. Otherwise it would have become more transparent. Same thing with the blue. We wanted something underneath, darker, but not so dark that it would bleed through to give you the color that we see when we look at these full rolls. Wendy, um, do you, in order to get rid of the comments, you swipe to, to the, the right. right. Yeah, swipe to the right and you won't see anybody. You'll just see the picture. Yep. And then you can tilt your phone. If your phone has the ability to tilt and it's not tilt locked, you can tilt it sideways and get full screen. So this was our blueprint. So this established how we were going to lay out our wreath. And I'm going to take these little guys off. What are you doing? I'll say hi to everybody. <laughs> Karen, Beverly, Lindy. Lindy's on. Hi, Lindy. Cindy, Noah, S, Sandra, um, Lisa, Weir, Wendy Riley, Kathy, Casper, Carrie, Kristen, Vi, Joy, Brenda, Gail. Wow. Yeah, we got a lot. We got about 104 people already. Well, great. Thanks for joining us. So let's get started. So I'm going to have Steve zoom back in. So like I said, we're just doing, we're going to lay our moss green base in, again, cut to 15 inches in every single one of these 18 pipe cleaners, Chanel stems or fuzzy sticks. So we had pre-cut all of this with, um, a wood burning tool or you can use a soldering iron and what it does on the plastic poly deco mesh is it cauterizes the ends now it's not going to be perfect you're still gonna have some pieces that fray but it will take away about 90% of your frame mm -hmm. so when they we can look, you can see this yep okay so when we ruffle you just basically pick an invisible line down the middle and it's going to wobble back and forth as you scrunch it but you're just going to pull it towards you so you don't have to use your hands and move your hands just pull the deco mesh towards you and then we have the finish side here finish side here these are my cut edges so i'm going to lay this face down in every single one of my chanel stems and i'll pull these down so you guys can see better Okay, bye. And you want the finished edges facing out and in. Right. So into the middle and out to the outside. And you want to put it in the middle as much as you can. And then you're going to give it a good twist. I just like to do one and a half. So we're going to do this for every single one, laying them side by side. And I don't do like all the inners and then all the outers because I find that I fight with my deco mesh too much to try to find these ones in between the inners so I just kind of go as they are around our wreath frame. Uh, hi Santa Rima Sean she said uh, she can hardly hear you yeah, try turning up the volume in your notebook we've got the volume on the phone turned up all the way yeah. and everybody else can let us know if you guys can hear us really well you know give us a uh, thumbs up well they'll like. always hear you really well because you're like right there by the camera yeah so uh, again, I'm laying them face down inside the pipe cleaners, just like so. And then we're kind of like layering them, I guess. They do overlap, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about fluffing any of that stuff right now. 
because we're going to come back and we're going to add more deco mesh on top of it. So like I said, these were cut to 15 inch pieces. So we just pull them towards us, just like so. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then just lay it in the next pipe cleaner location. And you're gonna go all the way around, inside, outside, inside, outside. And where you're gonna develop most of your fraying is where it's cut. So the reason why we're laying them, I guess vertical to the frame, the way the frame goes, is the cut edges are kind of curled oh, under. Yeah. So hopefully that will reduce the amount of fraying that happens. And of course stacking them like this doesn't help, but it keeps all my supplies from rolling off the counter. Because when we do this, when we're not doing it live, I would just cut all this mesh and then put it all in and then go cut my other mesh. So again, I'm just going my inner is closer than my other outer. So I just wire them together and then try to get the next one ready. It helps if you can keep the other ones out of the way because then you can lay them in there pretty good. So, What questions do you guys have that I can answer while I'm scrunching? It could be anything related to this wreath. It could be anything. Any question that you have, Steve will read it so I don't have to stop and do answer anything. She says, I can see Kat working on the mesh, but can't see Kat at all. There's something I need to do. No, we've got it zoomed in. I'm right here. <laughs> we've got it just zoomed in <laughs> so, so you can see how she places the mesh inside each of the pipe cleaners. We'll, we'll come back to the, yeah. the wider screen once we get all the deck and mesh laid. I'll zoom it back out here in a little bit. Yeah. Everyone always tells us they want to see what I'm doing and they don't need to see me, which makes me real happy. Hi, Kim. Kim says, first time live, finally. Hey, Kat and Steve, what you making? We are She making. already subscribed. Awesome. So very happy to catch you live. Yep. So, this is a dragonfly wreath. So, like I said, we had a couple different ways we could have done it. We could have definitely done a grapevine wreath and pulled that effect off really nice, but I wanted something to do with deco mesh because Grapevine, when you leave it outside, it because it's wood, depending upon your climate, it might prematurely dry out more than you might want it to. And um, the little dragonflies are like, I'm trying to see what they're made out of. They're like little foam pieces and then delicate wire. Are you bringing out your science? Yeah, there's a couple of people who asked what, what we got last night at Cracker Girl. Oh, the signage? Yeah. So we'll be sending the signs out to the people who, we just did like some fun, kooky giveaway. We we're just at Cracker Barrel and we decided, you know what? A lot of people don't have a Cracker Barrel near them, so let's just do some crazy giveaway. Yep. So we made Bacon come up with a number based on the number of people that we had. So they had a limited amount of time to get their answers in before he gave us his number. So I know Steve, we'll, we'll show you the signs. So one's going to, is it Deborah? I'm thinking. Uh, it was either Deborah or Donna. Uh, <sighs> I posted it on the page. Who won? Her last, her, yeah, her last, her last name was Vig, Vigno, right? Yeah, I want to say it's... And then Marie Deborah. Kraft, right? Yeah, and then Marie's getting um, the winner who actually hit the number 57 right on the head. Um, that was Donna, so she picked, she wanted the barefoot beach sign. So that's gonna be on her way to her as of Monday. And yep. then Marie picked the sparkle sign. So we'll show you what those look like. Yep. It's just fun signs because Cracker Barrel had a really good, I mean, their prices are amazing. Number one, I think the barefoot one was what, $12.99? And then the sparkle one was? $7.99, I think. Something like that, or yeah. $6.99. So that's why I picked those up. I'm like, I can use those. They're different. Yeah. Tammy says she worries about hiding the wreath form. Does this oh. technique well work with that? Yeah, well a lot. Well yes. At first she won't think it does, but um, I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna lay another layer on top of this to create the effect I wanted. So like right now, you can kinda see the wreath frame through it, 
but once I add the green and the blue to the top, you won't, you won't see it at yeah, all. You won't see it at all. No. There's a reason why she makes her wreaths the way she does. Yeah, yeah. there is a method to the madness. <laughs> And then because this is a base, like people always go, why do you cover up your, your deco mesh base to put other colors on? You know, aren't you taking away from that? And I guess, yes, in some ways I am. Although it depends on the effect that you're looking for. And Linda, this is, uh, what's the color of this? Moss green. Moss green. It's Craft Outlet's basic deco mesh. It looks like an army green. It's yeah, really dull. That's exactly what we use it for. Is we use it for the marine and the mm -hmm. army wreaths. Yeah. Because this is that color green. And then um, Kim, yeah, Kat can tell you more about your private group. She basically, it's on her Etsy page. Mm -hmm. You can go on and click on it and pay for it, $10. Um, and then she gives an additional <laughs> one video a week on business pages, on doing custom wreaths, and she talks about selling points and creating Facebook page, Etsy page, all that. Yeah, we do, I try to break it into even, it depends on how the weeks roll. Sometimes you get five, you know, you might get an extra one in there, but um, you get all the materials list for everything that I do, both in the private group and the public group. So I'll give you the rundown of the benefits really quick. Um, I'm trying to think. You get two, well you get one, additional weekly tutorial we meet on Wednesdays at 5 and if that time doesn't work for you I post the lives in our private group for you to watch as much as you want um, this last what did we do this last time this last one we talked about pricing how do we establish a pricing for what we're making mm -hmm. um, how to make sure that you're generating a profit and not just basically taking money in to resupply yourself we want to make sure that you're getting paid for your time um, we talked a lot about um, federal tax ID numbers. We talked about business license. Mm -hmm. What else did we talk about? Um, a little bit of marketing using our social media apps to generate that additional traffic to our sites. This one is not. There it goes. And then surely um, the best places she gets her signs from are um, Jane's front door decor and then she started using personally yours their signs are really great mm -hmm. um, Cracker Barrel obviously I get them everywhere I've gotten Where them else? from Goodwill I've gotten them from That's the true. Salvation Army like a lot of the Halloween ones last year we got from antique stores yeah and um, because I like all my designs to be completely unique and not the same so if you find something in an antique store odds are that's it. No one's going to have that sign. Yeah. So we found some really cool, like, old Edgar Allan Poe signs for Halloween. Yep. The Wreath Shop has good signs. Mm -hmm. um, Consumer Crafts. Consumer Crafts has some pretty good stuff. I'm trying to think. Uh, Kohl's. Yeah, Kohl's, believe it or not, had some pretty decent I'm, like, signs. I'm trying to think of all the crazy places we've shopped. Yeah. Big Lots. Yep. So just, you'll start to notice it now when you go out and about Walmart. Um, you'll just start looking. Once you start doing this for the fun of it, or even to make gifts for family and friends, or to take it up a notch and turn it into a business, um, you'll start looking everywhere you go. So this is my last moss green one. And my group will even say, you know, they know. Mm -hmm. When they're out and about, they're, they're looking in a whole different way. Like you start looking for embellishments that you can add to your wreath or colors or additional stuff. You heard Marisa, she was so excited when she got up for work and saw that she'd won a sign. Oh, I know, and it's such a cool sign too. I can't wait to make mine. It is, and we'll show them here in a little bit. Okay, so this is our, this is what it is. Are you zoomed in or zoomed out? I'm oh. still zoomed in. Okay, so there's our frame. Yeah. Now if I step out of the way, and you can actually still see light through. Mm -hmm. So that's all gonna go away. All this did, is to create a base for me to create the look that I want on top. So this deco mesh is very inexpensive. I I want to say it's like four dollars. I think the, like two ninety five a roll really? just for this. But this is really good. Like I said, if you're doing a military wreath, an army green. I'm trying to think of what other colors. If you're doing Christmas and you wanted kind of like a dusty, um, weathered evergreen color look 
This that, would work. And that's just a 10 inch, 10 inch deco mesh, dark mm -hmm. green. 10 inches cut to, Moss 10 green. inch roll cut to 15 inches. Yep. Now we're gonna come back in with the metallic. This is called metallic. Apple. It's metallic moss apple green. So it's moss hat, uh, backslash apple, mm -hmm. but it's got the foil in it. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because Steve and I were arguing. I wanted to go dull, not sparkly, and he wanted sparkly. So yeah. he won. Gail said so she has a request for a patriotic wreath to do. Uh -huh. And she said she thought perfect. She has everything the red, white, and the blue mesh awesome. that she bought from the crate. Yeah, the crate's. Yeah, we still have a few of the crates left, which is we put everything together for you to create your own unique crate. Um, we do all the shopping for you. We pick out the ribbon. We pick out your signs. And yep. nobody has the exact same box. Yep. She yep. said, would you use one of the colors as the base and then add two of the colors as either a curl or a scrunch? What, what color or, did you get? Or do you recommend doing a burlap scrunch to start? What colors did you get in your crate? I think she got red, white, and blue. Gail, did you get red, white, and blue? She might have gotten, well, there's red, white, and blue, and then some people got like a checkered red, white, and blue. Some people got a burlap with blue or burlap with red. So I'm alternating my colors, and these are, it's 10-inch deco mesh cut to 12-inch pieces. So now I'm alternating my colors, doing green, then blue, then it'll be green. And then I have to be careful because I'm, I'm zigzagging again. This time I'm going the opposite way. So I wanna make sure that I'm not putting like outside to outside the same color. So it's gonna seem like that when I go to grab another blue, but this green is outside, the blue is on the inside. So I alternate the colors all the way around. Sandra says she's, she's even found signs at Bass Pro Shop, so we can go take a look at it. See? Anything you guys can find that is no larger than 12 inches. 12 inches. Something if, that's like 8 by 8, 10 by 10 is perfect. As long as it doesn't exceed 12 inches, then it doesn't make the wreath look over, like, too small. Yeah. That the sign overpowers the wreath. And you guys have seen those, right? Where the signs are way too big for the wreath, and it's like you just barely have this little outside yeah. edge or border. And if you do have a sign that you really like that's like a 14 inch or 15 inch, you'd have to go up to like a 16 or 18 inch wreath frame. Wow, you are so good today. You are on it. Mm -hmm. You got sleep. <laughs> yeah. And Barb, um, we have a local Cracker Barrel by us that she went to into and found the signs. The only Cracker Barrel in California right now. I don't know if you can find them online, but hopefully you should be able to. If they sell it, you think you'd be able to. Yeah, just go online and query the name of the sign. If you're in my private group, I give you the SKU number, mm -hmm. so you can just go online and pick it out that way. And Karen, um, we got one of the Dragonflies sets at Hobby Lobby. Oh, these guys? Yeah. The bigger ones were from Hobby Lobby. And the other ones were from Joanne's? Yeah, there's Joanne's. these little ones. Yeah. So, they're two different. So, so, the bigger ones, Hobby Lobby, the smaller ones, Joanne's. The bigger ones, you get three. And I don't have my little card. I want to say it's like four or five dollars for three of them. It just depends on your look. So, again, I'm back on the inside. So, because I did blue, now I'm doing green. And it looks like I can just matchy matchy but it's not there is a purpose so again these are cut to 12 inches and I always push them down against the way they want to curl so it'll make it easier for me to hi Diana she said hi Kat and Steve hi Diana there's still a lot of people joining we're at 145 so. okay and then um Gail said yes no burlap <laughs> on this one yeah we have a little bit a little green it's kind of like a burlap no I think Gail was responding to your question what did she get in her crate burlap or no burlap right you asked her a question about what she got in her crate so um, I'm oh. guessing that's is that right Gail you were responding to the fact that you you didn't have burlap oh. maybe she can clarify yeah It'll take a, like, I think it's 20 seconds before the, she can type it in yep. and we actually see it. Okay, this is going back. Deborah says she loves the ruffle, but she has trouble keeping track when adding the second layer. Oh, I know. 
You could it just happens. go all the way around. Like that would be the easiest way to do it. But um, see, like this is green, then blue. Here's my blue. This will be green. This will mm -hmm. be blue. I think that's it. There's only six on the inside. But I had to do that just now because I was going to stick a blue right next to a blue. And then I realized it was my outer. Oh, Gail said yes. She got red, white, and blue mesh. No burlap. Okay. So just solid red, white, and blue? Yeah. I, if it was me, you do it one of two ways. You can put an all white deco mesh base, base down. Do you cut them to, what is it, 15 inches? Because that'll take about half of your, well, no, this, it'll take more than half of a roll. You can do maybe 14 inch, and you can do the whole base in white, and then add your red and blue, either curls or ruffles. Or you could do like what I'm doing. You could doing. still put some white curls in there too. Because you probably have enough off the roll. Mm -hmm. You yeah. could. This depends. If you want to sacrifice that roll and say, is this going to be a one wreath uh, supply? Um, you could lay the whole base down, do 15 inch pieces. Or you could alternate your base and go red, white, blue, red, white, blue. All the way around on your 12. And then do the same on the inside. And then, you guys have seen me do it before. If it's white... What I'll do is I'll put the curls on top, either red and blue, and if it's blue, then you put red and white, and then it gives you that mix. You can do it that way. So, great question. Yeah. Jenna said, uh, Dragonfly wreath is different. I think this will turn out great. Jen, I think you need to, to reach out and contact Kat, because I think you were the winner of the one crate. Janet, what's her last Johnson. name? Johnson. Yes, you won You won the crate. So we posted that on the site, and I don't think you, you caught it. So yes, um, message me with your mailing address because you actually won the crate. Yep. What did we do that for? Was it just some random thing? God, we have done so uh, many crazy stuff. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, naming the crates. She had the right, right. She had the right name. That's right. She had the right name. Well, Lindy had the right name, and she had the right spelling. She had the right spelling that that's we right. wanted to use. Cats creative crates. Yes, yep. that's exactly what they're called. Yes. So. So Janet you, Johnson, make sure you message me with your address so I can mail out your crate. So you'll get a crate full of red, white, and blue, or a combination somewhere a patriotic themed box or crate. So it'll have deco mesh, three rolls of deco mesh, two rolls of ribbon, and a sign or embellishments to go with it. Yep. Barbara said hi from New York. Hi, Stacey Barbara. Stacey said hello from Chicago. Love the colors. Hi, Stacey. Um, Susan said thank you for this lesson. I always wanted to learn how to do this. Awesome. And this is the easiest way to build a beginner wreath. The ruffle method is the easiest way. Yep. So I know some people say, oh, you do all the same wreaths. Deco mesh is really only about... Three standard ways of doing it. You can do it curls. You can do ruffles. You can do mm -hmm. poofs. Poof. Yeah. Um, or then you can come back in and lay lay down a different color, or put curls on top of a ruffle, or put ruffles on top of a poof. So yeah. these are just easy ways of building up our skill set. So when we get to what is it fall? Yeah. Or. Halloween, fall, and Christmas, where we're going to be busy. Yeah, you those are going to be some fun colors. You want to make sure that you have your skills down yep. to where if someone says, you'll be able to look at a picture if someone sends you a picture, and you'll automatically know what that person did to create that wreath. Was that a yep. poof? Was that a mesh? You could do all curls, too. Yep. We're going to do something as a group. I think oh. it's April 29th. What? Yeah, Deborah said the same thing. You could do curls without a base. Yep, you can and do then, everything. Uh, hi, Ginger. Hi, Donna. They said, hey, everyone. And then Kathy said, you guys are awesome. Thanks, guys. Barbara said, hi, from New York. Stephanie said, hi, from Virginia. Hi, Sue. Um, Sue, you are being, she said, this is her first time here. Hi, welcome. Let us know where you found us from. Yeah, we're always interested to know how you found us. And then uh, she asked, where did you get the dragonfly sign? Uh, personally, yours. So it's on Etsy, and it's personal. Capital P. Capital P, space. the whole word personal, yep. and then no space, and then capital L, L-E-E, -E, and then no space, and then capital Y, O-R, 
O U R S. Personally yeah. yours. Personally yours. Just like it sounds, but no spaces and capitalized in every. Um, and Lee's on here, so Lee, say hi to <laughs> Sue. <laughs> and then you can click on her and, and add and like her. Exactly. <laughs> I bought a lot of signs from her just recently. A lot. Oh, and thank you, Lee, for my, my extra Christmas sign. Oh, yes. I cannot beautiful. wait to use that one. And for me, I can't wait to share with you guys some of the stuff that, that's coming. Because um, I'm, I'm sold out right now on um, vintage stuff. Lee put, hi, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So there and you that, go. So that would be Lee. That would be Lee. Yep. The Etsy store. So. And Maureen said, I love the ruffle method. Love the way it looks. We Dorothy wanted it to look said, like water, I think, is the look we were going for, right? Like little ripples of the water. And yeah. where dragonflies, because dragonflies are always by water sources. Yeah. So we have them that go up and down the wash. Some people have them on their pool. What is your guys' favorite color dragonfly? I know. Yeah, when you think of dragonflies, I think of green, blues, and purples, kind of. And green. Green, green, green. And then I think I have a green in the middle, too. And down to my last two. So we're scrunching, and sometimes they get stuck. So we just scrunch them into little bow ties. Back. Kim said purple. I love the purple ones. Yeah. What ones did you say you like? Green, blue. Green, blue, and purple. Yeah, Green, those blue, are the purple. main ones I think. You see a lot of different colors in each dragonfly. They all have a lot of, a lot of different colors. I know. I love the wings. I just like them in general. I think I first was exposed to dragonflies from the movie The Rescuers, like Disney's movie The Rescuers. Yeah. <laughs> Evan Reed was mm -hmm. the dragonfly. He was my favorite. I liked him. Yeah, Kathy said blues. Marie said purple. Mm -hmm. uh, Janine Schlein, Copper Dragon. I get to say that word again. Yay! Said blues and greens. Uh -huh. And then Desiree said red or blue. Yeah, I always see red. See, that was one I was sure, going to say. Sure, Red. Those are the ones I think that really stand out and the ones that you're like, ooh, that's pretty. Like hummingbirds. So here's our little last piece of our blue. So we're scrunching. Hey, don't worry about it. She said, got alert, but she got the alert, but she was making dinner, so she was late again. Yep, don't worry about it. You can just jump in and then watch the replay all the way back to the beginning, which will be posted immediately after we're done. So if you don't see the red live here. That's right. <laughs> is that right where it's at? Pretty close. Okay. Right to where you're pointing. All right. So, yeah, that's where it would pop. Red live means you're live. Nothing there means you're watching the replay. Check so. she's getting an idea for a patriotic wreath mixing red, white, and blue. Uh -huh. It would be great using this method. Yep. It does. Yeah, because you can toggle the whole base and go red, white, blue, red, white, blue, and then come back in and layer even more. So now if you want to stand that up, you can show yeah. them. Are we zoomed in? I'm zoomed out. You can okay. see so you can still see faint traces of the mossy green. Yeah. So it's still in there. But what it did is it darkened the deco mesh that I used on top. So instead of having to use more of it to create that color depth, mm -hmm. I just put a really low level, the green on the back yeah. and just let that use as my base. And you can't see the wreath, the wreath form at all now. No, but then once we add ribbon to it, you'll yeah. definitely not see it. So, like I said, our goal in this was, it just was like the water. So not all water's blue, but it has a little bit of green, different shades of green. Yep. And we like the blue that went with this. And if you guys look, the sign goes really well. Like this, what is it? The mossy like the metallic mossy green, green yeah. really plays off the sign. And we went with, the blues and the darker greens yeah. And, yeah and the darker greens inside the dragonfly yeah. that was our how do we put our color scheme together really different color wreath yeah and if you look i mean i don't think you guys can see it but on the white counter that's all the debris i have left a little bit yeah that's it yep 
And somebody had said earlier they 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 saw that there wasn't very much fraying is because we used the wood burning tool mm -hmm. to cut all the deco mesh on this one because it's it, there's no natural fibers in it. Yeah, it pretty much cauterizes and and uh, seals the plastic when you cut it, so it doesn't really fray. Bring the trash can over here. Okay, so these are our ribbon choices that we're going to be using. So I'm going to kind of switch places with this for now to show you. Obviously we want blues and greens again. So we're doing, oh you didn't get me my list. That's okay. Yeah, that's right. Oh you have it? Because I know you guys are going to ask where I got the colors. So I have my, <laughs> my cheat sheet right here. Okay so the two and a half inch blue canvas was from Hobby Lobby. Let's see, the green window pane mesh at two and a half was Craft Outlet. And that's cut to 10 inches. These are about 10 inches. And then these are cut to, I want to say 12. 12. Yeah, I'm not exactly holding them up right. This was from Costco at Christmas time. So this is a lot of my Christmas leftover ribbon. So it's actually very sheer. But it's a satin blue. And then the green canvas, also cut to 12, was from Joann's. Mm -hmm. And then the sheer green was from Hobby Lobby. And that's also like a mossy army green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it pulls those colors. All these are exactly the same colors, or not exact, but pretty close to the colors that we used in the deco mesh. So where we have green, we're adding a blue mm -hmm. with the green, like half bows on top. But what we did this time is when we did this and made our little half bows it was so sheer between this it got lost so what we're going to be doing is we're actually doubling these up like this so that when we do our um what do I call it half bows half bow. you got that color coming back in so it really pops on that royal blue mm -hmm. so that's why we have this many oddball ribbons Luz. Hi, Luz. She said, hi, first time seeing you. Congratulations. Very nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> how many ties do you have in outside and how many inside the wreath? So on the, on the outside, she's got 12. Mm -hmm. um, and on the inside, she's got six for a total of 18. Yeah. And this is a Dollar Tree 14 inch wire frame. Right. And it has four wires along it. So on the inside six, she has tied to the in, inner two wires, which are one and two. And the outside 12, she's got tied to three and four. Yeah, so you can see the, the bright green pipe cleaners basically tell you where they're all laid out. Yep. So that describes what Steve is. So there's one in the very center. Of each section? Yep. Yeah, and then there's two on the outer. Yep. Okay. So now all of my ribbon except for these two pieces are dovetail cut. And I always assume that people that are watching us already understand or already know how to do that. Um, a lot of people think that they know what the dovetail is. Cause like when I did my live with my best friend who had never done a wreath, cause I wanted to show everybody it's easy. It's as easy as I'm sitting here explaining it to you. And when I told her we were gonna put little V's or dovetails um, in the ends of our ribbon like this, she's like, oh, I already know how to do that. And so she proceeded to take her ribbon and she was going to, you know, do what we all do, which is cut in and then cut in and wherever they meet that piece falls out. Well, there's a much easier way and it makes it come out perfect every time. You take your wired ribbon, you bend your wired ends together. Fold it in half. Yep. You don't have to fold it. Just hold it that way. And then you cut from the fold side to the tip of your point on the wire side, just like that. And then you have a perfect dovetail. It will save you so much aggravation at Christmas time to sit here and do it. Just fold your wired edges together and make sure you're cutting from your fold to the point and you're not cutting on this side to the folded point. Right. Because if you do, you make a big arrow. And yep. I would show you what that looks like, but I'd have to go get more ribbon. So back to this <laughs> point and we make our dovetail cut. So Brenda, she said, hey, Kat, do you use Probo? She, she does. I do. She uses it when she thinks it, it's right for the wreath. Yeah. It makes a perfect bow, 
and I haven't gotten used to the sizing of using, you know, the different rows, like did you use row B, did you use row C? I like being able to decide how big I want my loops to be or how, um, like how not perfect I want them to be. Sometimes I just want them to be random flanks. Mm -hmm. So doing it freehand or using a probo, or not probo, but dabber helps. So that's how you dovetail all your ribbon. It adds a nicer finished look to your wreath than just cutting them square. Victoria said, started on my very first teacher wreath today after school. Aww. Got the, gir the burlap base down. Good job. Awesome. Good job. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Come back and share pictures on our page. Now, on your window pane ribbon, you can get the burlap version of this, the tan version at Hobby Lobby. It's in their burlap section. It's just all the way at the bottom bottom row of ribbon and it's on a roll and I think it's $9.99 for a 30 foot roll just when you cut it because it's woven cut it between the squares don't cut it right along the edge otherwise mm -hmm. it'll just unravel as you're working through it so you'll have like these little jagged pieces that should keep it in place while you're working with it <laughs> okay now you can go back to your questions yeah, I'm just changing um, these out. I'm moving them over. Let's see. Susan, maybe you can explain a little bit. She said, if I mess this up, do you have a site you seal them on? Site? I don't know what you're talking about. If you mess up what? If, if I mess this up, do you have a site? Oh, maybe you sell them on. If she messes it up. Oh, uh, like buying the wreath? Yeah. Um, or if she messes up making a wreath, I don't know. Susan, you want to uh, clarify? clarify? That. Yeah, yeah, clarify a little bit more. Well. We'll uh, reply back to you. Peggy, my mom and dad are doing good, thanks. My mom was in the hospital for a couple days. I need to call her today and see if she's still... <laughs> in the hospital. In the hospital where she got released. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is where I have the royal blue, I'm coming in with the window pane, and then I'm going to lay my window pane in. I'm not going to undo my pipe cleaner. I'm just going to lay it in on top of where I had already twisted it. And then I'm going to come back in, and this is where the satin ribbon is really difficult to work with because it's so slippery. And the tinsel strength on the wire is very thin, so I make these little half bows to fill them. So you basically make a two inch loop, and then they're like awareness ribbons. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come in and lay this directly on top of my window pane mesh to pop the blue back out. And that's also part of her method is that's how she fills the gap. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes is she does uh, those half bows. Yeah, if you had, um, you could come in with, a, I guess, a floral color and put some Florals floral in, in here. Yeah. Um, I had thought about doing that, but uh, there's nothing really natural that would have uh, this royal of a blue in it. So I just do this to fill and complete that look. That I'm going for and then I'll twist it once I put in my little chevron or awareness half bows I twist my pipe cleaners about five times and then I leave them in there just in case I want to come back in and change it like maybe I'll put my sign there and it's gonna completely cover this so mm -hmm. I can come back in and take all that out and save it or I could leave it in which case, if the customer ever decides they want to change the signs and put something else in, mm -hmm. all they have to do is just cut the sign out and then they still have a good base to work with. So now I have my green. I just have to find where the other half of his little stem went. So where I have the green now. And the green the green window pane was from Hobby Lobby too, I think, wasn't craft it? Craft Outlet. Oh, Craft Outlet. Yeah. There you go, Craft Outlet. So here's our green. So we're going to do a blue canvas. Hi, Karen. Karen said, hey, Kat and Steve, looks good. Hi, Karen, Karen. from Riverside, which is the Rick. Oh. It's Karen. <laughs> You're getting better, babe. You're getting better. Cindy said, love the colors. It's Seahawks colors. It's true, it is. Is it For really? Foothill. Yeah, they're green and blue. I just like the blue and the green. I just thought they were good colors. And Karen, the sign is from Personal Lee Yours, who is also watching this video. So... Here's where now I've added in my blue. So this is where I'm gonna double up on my ribbon just because I don't want it so sheer, but I do like the shimmery look of the ribbon. 
So this is my way of creating a two-in-one, and I wanna make sure that I'm putting them on the right side so that my ribbons, the wire's on the inside. So I'm gonna take these, match my tails. Again, do your two-inch loop, and I'm gonna put it in here. It always sounds better in theory than when you actually have to go in and do it, but we made it work. So pardon me for my, my Chanel stems for now, because they're gonna be there till the end. Because I've actually done that before. Did an entire wreath, put all the ribbon in, looked at it and said, I don't like that. So the only thing I did is just pre-cut a bunch of ribbon that I'll use somewhere else, but I'm not locked into trying to cut my Chanel stems and pull all my deco mesh out so that's what that looks like here. And so we're gonna do that every single one alternating. So if it's the blue, we're gonna put in, to get my Chanel stems out of the way, blue gets the window pane and the royal blue. So I'll just keep these here so you guys will see it. And then we will we'll do blue with this plus this. So again, it's just, deepening that look. So I'm gonna flip these over. What questions do you guys have so far about what we've done up to this point or just anything in general? Because this is Q&A time, why I work, mm -hmm. and Steve Fields questions. Donna said, uh, good evening, Cat Steve, just joining in, looks awesome so far. Hi, Donna. Sharon's just checking in. And then Susan did say, oops, sale. So I guess um, if she messes it up, well, First of all, um, Susan, um, you know, talk to Kat or message her if you're having problems, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, you can message me. Keep in mind, really, the only time I, I'm really bad about my, my messages in that I will respond to my messages as soon as I possibly can. So even if I'm driving, not driving, if I'm in the car as a passenger and Steve's driving, I'll pull up my messages, I'll respond to messages, I'll give feedback if I can. Um, and then of course, obviously, while I'm asleep, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna do that. But it's the first thing I do in the morning. And she really tries to cater to her um, private group. Yeah. Because they're the ones who are really paying and she tries to give her devoted time to them. I try. They get priority. And there's been times that they'll send me pictures and say, Here's what I'm doing, here's what I'm working with. Just making sure I'm on the right side. Um, I'm stuck, I don't like the way this looks. What do you suggest? And we all get to that ugly point in our wreaths where we wanna give up. And I encourage you that if you have done your mock-up and you like the way your mock-up looks, keep going mm -hmm. despite what you see in your wreath. It will all come together by the time you get to the end. Audrey said, love the way this color or this is coming together. And then Brenda said, can you show how you pull apart and fluff the half bows and window paint? Absolutely. Um, and Teresa, nice color blends. <laughs> let me see if I can do this. It's always so, it's more difficult to do it when I'm reaching across than when I'm doing it this way. Um, but that's another benefit to the private group. The camera's right here. Yeah, she saws a different angle, so it's like kind of right over her shoulder. Yeah, it's like if you're standing next to me. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this. So here's our blue. I'm going to move these pieces out of the way. So blue gets green. It gets green and then blue. So we take our window pane and we'll fold it in half. Linda, that's a green window pane ribbon. From Craft Outlet. From Craft Outlet. That's two and a half inches. Yep. They have the same in beige you can actually get from Hobby Lobby but they don't have the green, so. So as you guys saw, I just basically, I laid it right in on top of my pipe cleaner. And I just have those sitting there for now because this is the nightmare ribbon just because it's, even it's, though this is wired. It's wired, but it's a thin wire. Yeah, it's very thin wire. So when you go to scrunch it, it's just very pliable. Linda, this is a 14 inch frame, not a 12. Yeah. She, she usually, her go-to is usually a 14 inch. Sometimes she'll go up uh, to a 16 or 18, but she usually uses a 14 inch. Okay, so 
Once I put that in there, I twist it about five times just to secure it because I'm, I'm pretty sure in my head I'm going to come back in and cut all these off. So here's my little chevron bow. So I'm going to take it and put my thumbs or my fingers in and fluff the bow because it was laying flat. It's squished. And then remember that the pipe cleaners will be gone. So I just pull them out like so. Here, let me sniff that one so you guys can see what it looks Sue, like. I assume I already checked. I guess Craft Outlet is out of the green window pane. See, every it's going to be really difficult, I think, for a lot of wreath makers right now. Because a lot of the bigger name wreath makers are making their own crates. Or they are offering... They're making their own... They're making their own warehouse. Warehouse, yeah. So you can buy the supplies through them. So but for they're us, selling out of Craft Outlet and all the other places. Right. So with us, like for me, I only make... Like this is it. This will be the only wreath like this that I will make. Right. Um, so it works for me, but let's say, for example, I had three people who wanted the same wreath. If I can't go back in and find this, I'm stuck. I'd probably have to ask the customer, can we do a beige? I have beige. Would you like a different color? Totally, like maybe we, we go green on this and mm -hmm. then maybe there's blue, just find a way to change it up somehow. So now I'm back to green. So I'm gonna do my blue. Bold and there's other down. places you can check. You can check the wreath shop and a couple other ribbon places yeah, to not, see if they have it or not. I'm not allowed to get about my ribbon source person because they got inundated once we did that. <laughs> and she was really nice to call me and say, thanks for the shout out, but um, I haven't had sleep since 4 a.m. <laughs> Just because I was Which like, is a good thing for them. But. That's what I told her. So if you notice how she's laying out the, the ribbon, oh, sorry. it's in like a V pattern with the blue yeah, and the I green. Just pull them. She pulls them out. Except for this towards one. Towards the outside, right. Because I think I'm gonna like leave some of these up so I can put Facing, my dragonflies yeah. on them. Yeah. So here's that double green. So I'm gonna take it and lay it right on top of it. So I zoomed in, so I hope you can kind of see it. Moving these out of the way. So I'm going to take it and match up. Gail said every color of the paint is gone right now. Uh, see? So Hobby Lobby does have the beige window pane. Um, they, they carry that for the most part. I'm trying to work on a supplier. Trying. Like, remember I keep telling you in my group it's all about building a community. It's all about finding um, people that will work with you. You know, if you treat them nice, they're going to treat you nice, you give them business, they'll give you business. So, um, this Lauren, one's a little challenging. Lauren, cat's on every Friday at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, which is 8 o'clock Eastern time, uh, 7 o'clock Central <laughs> yeah, time. I know, I was like thinking of that. On Fridays and Sundays, and on our, her private group, she's on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But if you like and follow, there should be another drop down where you can also get notifications. I think once you click, like you have to like it first and then you have to click follow. And then when you do that, it'll say, um, see this person first or see this person's post first. And then there's an option that says, do you want to be notified when this person goes live? And you just put yes. Yes. And then that's it. And then it's our free service. Because I'm not into the whole mini, mini chat bot things, whatever people are doing on that, where you type a word and then it messages, sends a message to you. I heard that that actually got shut down because I think too many people were using it. Yeah, that's so. a good idea. Audrey said you can even check Etsy. People on Etsy might be selling that two and a half inch window pane ribbon. Yeah, I mean, what I'll do, like if I was to try to find this, and I didn't even realize that it was out. Um, I would check all the local places, right? Trendy Tree, Craft Outlet, The Wreath Shop. Um, I don't think Consumer Crafts carries it, but you could try it. You could always try. I mean, the worst is, is they yeah. don't carry it and you're like, okay, I won't be looking here. Um, then you could check eBay. You could always check eBay. You could try Amazon. You could try Amazon. Um, and then just, you can do a general Google search for green window pane two and a half inch mesh ribbon and see what comes up. So I'm just spinning it around and now back to my blue. It's funny, I thought 
thought I saw it late on in the bedroom, but it wasn't. <laughs> so, and the only reason I'm doubling this, you don't have to, is that it's really thick when you try to scrunch canvas with the, um, with the shear. One's to make sure the shear doesn't fall off the canvas until you can get it in there and twist it. And if you see when she's doing this, she's not taking apart the the, the, pipe the pipe cleaners. She's just adding the next layer right on to what she's already twisted on. Yeah. So the base, you know, she'll twist on it a couple times, and then she'll add the next ruffle and twist it a couple times, and then she'll add the next ribbon and twist it a couple times, and add the next ribbon again. That's the reason for why those pipe cleaners are so tall sticking out, is you They're layer them. They're 12 inches, yeah. You layer them, yeah. So now I'm going back to window pane. So we cut, I think we cut nine of every single size because you figure you have 18 pipe cleaners, you're going to need nine blue sets and nine green sets, so that helps you. So I'm just laying my window pane in here. And also, Sue, since you were just joining a new, the private group, um, not only do they you know, have their own videos, but they get a, a list of all the materials that Kat uses for each wreath. What yeah. size What size the ribbon is cut to, what colors, where she got it from, skew numbers, the yeah. deco mesh, all that. My little cheat sheet note <laughs> on a bigger spread. And then we give you the links too. Now keep in mind if it's something discontinued, like I don't know if Costco will still carry this, but yeah. you can at least look for a royal blue one and a half inch yeah. ribbon. You should be able to find that. I would have probably wanted to use a thicker, like a cotton. I just didn't have anything in this shade of blue. So I had to go with the one that I had. And now I'm doing blue. I keep making sure I'm doing these the right way. Blue gets green, green gets blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just <laughs> making sure. I'm like, cause I'm coming around the corner and I'm like, hmm. That's right, I only have six on the inside. So again, that's how I got it laid in. I twisted it twice. And then you can take it because it's wired and just pull it down and like give it a V. Like a half fluff, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. So, and then we just matchy matchy again. I guess you could, if you wanted to, you could glue these two together and make your own. Yeah, I don't, need, I don't think you need to. But I didn't want to. You could have. And then I just stuff them in there, give them a really good twist about five times. After she puts the, the half loops in, like she's that. pretty much done and then she twists it five times. Yeah. And then she cuts it off and folds it back behind and then... As soon as I find the other half of the piece. Once she fluffs everything, nope. you don't see it at all. Nope. Because I'll take whatever's left of that Chanel stem and tuck it in behind the ribbon. Just like so. Awesome, Brenda. Brenda said... Been watching you guys for a while now. Love what you do, and I'm going to join the private group. Awesome. Awesome. It's so much nicer. Like I said, it's 35 cents a day is what it averages out to. And then you can sit back and watch the videos and just watch them. And people are like, well, what? Where'd you get the wreath sign? Or where'd you get the sign? Where'd you get this? Where'd you get that? How, how long did you cut that? It's like my group knows um, by this time tomorrow. I usually try to do it the same night. It just depends on what we have going on, but I've already, yeah. it's already done. The list is already done. I just have to snap pictures and add pictures to the, um, the list. Oh, that's awesome, Donna. She said the best, best investment I made was joining this group. Thank you. Yeah, plus you get a, a, you get a really good close-up because it's kind of behind her shoulder looking down, and it's a good close-up of when she does the wreath. And... and we're working on discounts for our group. I know that some other groups offer discounts for an additional monthly fee. I'm trying to negotiate those deals and building a community without charging extra for that. Um, so we have a couple of them right now. We're working on a couple more. So hopefully once all those relationships are secure. Yeah. And, and Brenda, I think you were the one who said, do you use Probo? Um, <laughs> Kat does have a... Um, the bow making video. She has a bow making video she did a couple months back, I think, about a month, a month and a half ago back. So you can go back to the Facebook <laughs> or you can even find her, her YouTube and it shows how she used the Probo and the uh, Bodebra. Yeah, we made 
bows for our pet wreaths, our pet paw wreaths. Paw print pet wreaths. So here's the last one for the outside, and then that should leave me three. And I do have another one over there. So three and then four. So that, at least my count was right. A lot of times I'll change it in the middle and I'll be like, you know what? I don't like the way that looks. Let's change it and add a different color combo. Britta said, awesome, I just got my promo. <laughs> I know. And then Gail brought up a good point is also in the group, even in the public group, a lot of the gals say where they're from. And if uh, some of you gals are so close to each other, meet up, meet up and make some wreaths together and have coffee and and get to befriend each other. Uh, I know, it's like that one lady that reached out to me last night. She yeah. just messaged me on Facebook and she goes, I see that you live in Victorville. I was like watching your lives and realized that you're in Victorville, which is where she lives is like not more than... A couple miles away. Yeah, five miles away. And she's like, can we meet for coffee? I want to pick your brain. I'm like, sure. Yeah. We'll meet. We'll, yep. We'll go to Cracker Barrel. Hi, Don. Show her how to pick out signs. Don Cobra just got on. Hi, Don. Okay, so now then, we're going inside so these are all the outside ones are done so this is what it looks like from there i think yeah. you're still zoomed in right no i'm out you're out yeah. okay you can see it. i never know when you're out or in okay so again every time i have the blue, the green i'm going to lay the blue on the top so it's just re-emphasizing these colors over and over and over again and because we're not going to put our sign in the middle but off to the side we kind of have to do something with the middle. Mm -hmm. We can't just ignore it. So we're gonna finish this up. We will add our sign and then add our dragonflies. And then we'll see what we what we see, what we like. Marie said she's gotten so much better since joining the group and have sold three wreaths and have orders for three more. Cool. Awesome, Marie. I love it. I know, I love it when, when they fly. That's what you just keep seeing. I love being able to encourage them and in any way I can. Yes, Brenda, go to Kat's Etsy shop um, and sign up for the private group. And this will be for... What is today? April? We're in the middle of the month. April? Yeah. yeah, April. Yeah, but it's not in the middle. It's for April. It's for April. And you can pay for as many months as you want. Yep. I think I have one person pay all the way through October. She's like, yeah. I, I'm so busy. I, I don't want to not be like, if I don't pay, I get bumped out. Hey, we're gonna need more of this. Oh no, I have them here. <laughs> Donna says she still hasn't made an Etsy store yet. Still trying to come up with a name. Well, you got homework to do, Donna. Let's talk, Donna. Between <laughs> us both, we can come up with a name. See, they're doing what I should have done when I set up my Etsy store, which is, here's a tip. If you're just planning on a business name, look it up and make sure it's not already taken. Like, just Google search whatever name you wanted, like Cat's Creations, God forbid. There's probably none of those, right? Yeah. There's tons of them. <laughs> so, um, I am not the only one. Um, however, because we have more people, we're seen on Google first than everybody else, but you can still see all the other Cat's Creations. But just double check that your business name is not found in Google, and it's not found on your social media favorites like Facebook. Or Etsy. Or Etsy, yeah. or, well, Etsy's gonna require you to smush it all together anyway, yeah. but. Um, and all you really need to do is type in the search of a name that you think. It's like a five minute homework assignment. Yeah. But I'll walk you through everything. How to do it, what to look for. Um, then we get you set up on your Facebook business page first. We get and, that up and running so that you can start to sell. Yep. And those videos are also in her private group. Um, we get you hooked up on the square which is your point of sale system. And if you use my referral, which I don't get anything for it. I used to, um, I think it's, if you use my referral code for the square, which is great for your craft fairs, it enables you to sell right now on Facebook and take credit card payments either over the phone or over the internet. And it's free um, for your first, what is it, thousand dollars? Yep. So you get fee free for your first thousand dollars worth of sales, which is amazing. Nobody gives stuff away for free. So there's a lot there. I just really need to sit down and write a benefit page for what do you get for 10 bucks? Because it does sound too good to be true. 
So I'm just sitting here working my way through the inside ones where I find them. And this is where I can kind of fluff and push them, push them down towards the middle. Great. Charlene said it was fun watching you at Cracker Barrel last night. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun in Cracker Barrel. I, we were just seriously hoping we weren't going to get kicked out. <laughs> Gloria, hi. She said hi from Northwest Ohio. Love your projects. Hi, Gloria. And then, uh, Danielle said, hi, Kat. Just tuning in. Those colors are beautiful. Thank you. I know. I like the... That was funny. I didn't realize these are Seahawk colors. Even though it's blue, it's it's like really earthy. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking, like, when I look at it, I think of pond. Like a clean pond. Yeah. Not like a grungy pond. We were going to do grungy. We were going to do this really pretty ombre polydeco mesh that I have that's rubbery. Which is amazing for outside. It is pretty. It's beige, tans, browns, and greens. Greens, yep. But we wanted the blue. It just didn't go with the sign. So sometimes you got to throw it out. Say, it's not that one. We'll use it someplace else. So here's our green. So it's our last blue. And then we have one last green. And then our ribbons are done. You gotta put the sign in. And then we gotta put the sign in, which is why I don't cut any of my pipe cleaners <clears> off. <throat> and that's why I tell you that if you really hate your design, work it all the way through to the end because. Oh no, I don't. I have one more. So, oh, I have the blue. Blue's over there. One more. So that was the blue that I saved uncut to show you how hard it is to cut a satin ribbon with very zero tinsel strength to it. So I'm just the person who, when I create my, my wreaths, I don't like to cover up my deco mesh um, full of ribbons. And I might that might change later. If somebody sends me a picture and that's what they want, then I'll do it. But I like my ribbon to be seen. <clears throat> you spend so much in ribbon. And, and even deco mesh. Some of the deco mesh is extraordinarily expensive. So here's my last one. Peggy also said enjoyed watching you live with at Cracker Barrel yesterday. The Cracker Barrel. Yeah. I know. Did you guys like Bacon Robert? He's such a nice guy. He really is. I know a lot of you women have crushes on him too. You're all saying he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> he's cute. Like, I think. Well, he's only in his what? He's mid twenties. Yeah. Mid twenties. Yeah, he's just got a great personality. He's a great server too. He really yeah. Every time we go into Cracker Barrel and he sees us, he goes up to the servers and says, I get them. He's just the bomb. He brings us her. He brings everything. We don't even have to really order. Two of everything, yeah. And that's pretty bad because it's like that at Paulina's too. So I just <laughs> dovetail cut the last of my blue. Oh, Donna said, love the grapevine wreath on the door working on one for her daughter. Oh yeah. It's a beautiful one, yeah. That's um I think it's my favorite color roses. I made it with sterling roses, which are the purple roses. They're the only roses that come without the thorns on them. Mm -hmm. And I had them growing in my garden in my old house, but we sold that house. So we don't have that house anymore and I miss those roses. So I'm gonna tighten this one a couple <laughs> more. I gave it a quick close up. You did? Yeah. Charlene said, yes, bacon is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. We told him that. And at first he was kind of like a little taken back that we like, we were videotaping him live. And then by the end of the night, he's like, so how many people were watching me? <laughs> and I was like, I think it was like 500 or some odd views. And now it's like over a thousand. He's like, can you tag me in that video? Yeah. I was like, yeah. We'll put you in it. Donna said thank you for doing that, for zooming in on the grapevine one. Oh, yeah. We'll start doing some more grapevines. I'll kind of throw those in. Yeah. It's just they're so... You can't store them like I would store deco yeah. mesh wreaths right now. That has to get stored like it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's all just sterling roses. What is it? Lavender. Lavender. Delphinium. Um, Fern. The fern, and then there's something else. What is it? Freesia. Freesia. Blue freesia. Yeah. Okay, so this is our sign. Again, this came from Personally Yours on Etsy. So 
just like it sounds. Don't, um, you need to double the L's. So personal, P-E-R-S-O-N-A-L. -E yep. And then next to that, don't leave any space. Just put capital L, L-E-E, -E, and then right next to that, yours, Y-O-U-R-S. So capital P, capital L, capital Y. If you try to search for it just by the name, it'll say like not found. If you try to just put one L in it and capitalize just the singular, you won't find it. So um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in and we're gonna add our sign. So first of all, let me show you what the roof looks like first. You wanna pick it up a little bit more? Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were in or out. I'm out. Okay. There you go. So that's what it looks like. So you can see you really can't see now into the internal of it at all. <laughs> the internal. You can, like, you can see the, the just the center of it. The but that's center, right. but not like that. Yeah. So. When you hold it down, you can't see any. You can't well, see the reef form I'm at all. I am standing there, but it's yeah. the same thing. If you put it up against a wall, it's going to create a barrier that like light won't pass through, so you're not going to see right through it. Yep. But and then the deco mesh is really nice because it holds up to the weather, so it's really good for outdoor. The ribbon will hold up really well. The only thing that I would tell a customer is to prevent premature fading of the wreath. Mm -hmm. You know, like having the sun bleach it out and fade it. Keep it under a patio or under an awning. Overhang, yeah. Uh, overhang, like we have a big long porch that goes over. So it'll just help it last longer. Deborah was awesome. She said, if anyone out there is on the fence about joining the group, <laughs> you won't be sorry, it's so worth it. I love my peoples. Okay, so on the back of our signs, this is what I encourage you always to do because when your reach shifts out and you ship it out to a customer, you're going to include some business cards and maybe they'll catch them, maybe they won't. But if you attach your business card to the back of the, the sign. sign, then the customer's always got your information readily available should they need to call you or contact you with their next order, yep. which is generally what happens. So this is just a nice um, feature to have. And then I always request that my signs do not come with holes punched in them because I'm never sure where I'm going to put them. I don't know if I'm going to punch holes top or bottom. I don't know if I'm going to punch them side to side or to the sides mm -hmm. or four corners or all the way around. So I like to just be able to decide where I want to put my my sign. And yeah. I know everybody Steven was saying Robert was a cutie. And then Robert. Uh, Gail said next week will he be, he'll be asking, am I live? I know. And then uh, Charlene said you need to invite Bacon to your house for, to visit one of the lives. So we should, but he always <laughs> works. I think he works on all the nights that that we go live. And then Brenda said, yes, we're at that age where we love having innocent crushes. And, right. <laughs> and you're just window shopping. You're not going to go test drive the car. You're just looking. Yep. Okay. So. And also on the personally yours, um, if you scroll up. She is on here. She was watching earlier, so you might still be watching now, but you can always just click on her and add her right there on Facebook, and then you can find her through Etsy. Okay, so what I've decided that I want to do, I was like pulling, like, do I want to like kind of tuck it in there? Do I want to kind of leave it on this side? I'm thinking the way that I have it, let me see if I can hold it, the way F would be something like this. Isn't that kind of what we had? Yeah. Planned? Yeah. Kind of off to the side, but not like straight up and down, but kind of angled. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put our dragonflies in various places throughout the wreath. Mm -hmm. So knowing that's where my sign location is going to be, I have a metal hole punch, which will pop a hole in the metal, just like it would if you were punching, uh, putting a hole in, a in paper. Yeah. So it works the same concept. So you have a point, but it's not a point point. It's like not sharp that you can get cut, but you're just gonna punch a hole in the top. Yep. So I know it's gonna be right in here. And she has links to all of the material that she uses on her on I've her made regular it easy. page. Yeah, so you guys can go there and you guys can click on it and it takes you right to the link on Amazon. So I'm just popping holes in these. <laughs> I learned from years being a blogger that your customers are happy if you can make things simple on them. So if you can provide them with one-click options to get to wherever they need to go, they're likely to stay a little longer on your page. Yep. So providing links and just saying, <clears throat> all you have to do is click here, and it takes you right to the Amazon Buy window. So, hey, Tina. Tina's from uh, Australia, I think, right? 
A T E E N A. T E E N A. Yes, Australia. She said, "Hey, Kat, just shared with our Facebook group in the UK all awesome. occasion reads UK, so maybe you can check that one out." Yeah, and it's on Facebook. Yeah. Now, as of what was it, Friday? I think. Yeah. We have opened up our wreaths and our crates to, to Canadian customers, so we are actually shipping to Canada now. So. Um, I know supplies are very difficult to get. Shipping is through the roof. Um, but we did a sample ship and it got there in five days. To buy. Um, very little damage to the box. So it didn't take me any extra time. So if you're fine with paying the shipping, we will ship it to you. Yep. Vi, Vi got it just on Friday. So Vi can testify that uh, everything came out really well. Yep, she shot a video and shared it with all of us and said, here, I'm opening my crate. So now I'm going to hook up by every time I go shopping. Because <laughs> I know how limited it is and I wanted these. Connie, Debbie, and Robin all said love the colors. We said to the tilted in, right? Yeah, I just tilted a bit. Okay, so what I've done is I'm taking my pipe cleaner and I'm pushing it all the way through the inside through my deco mesh. What you want it to do is come between two rails, just like when you added your pipe cleaners to the top. So this one came through between one and two, and this one came between three and four. So now I'm just gonna lightly twist them together because I still have to attach the other one, and I don't want this one to be so tight that I can't find these as I go to fish these down. I've got it zoomed in a bit. Okay, well, I'm just gonna fish. Okay. So this is kind of like pushing that needle yeah. through the fabric when you're not looking on the underside of your fabric, but you're just using your hands. Hi, Don. Yes, the wreath is for sale on Cat Tetsy Shop. It's already there. So all you dragonfly lovers, <laughs> it's one of a kind. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making. This will be the last one. Well, like all mine, I only make one because I want customers to have their own unique piece. Oh yeah, and Lee just commented again. She also includes the mounts. She does. For I her totally forgot about that. Punch the holes on the side. Yep. Yeah, I just like pop in my <clears> hole in that one. Good night, Donna. Thanks for joining. So now I'm going to. Denise just said, "Oh my God, just made it." Hi, Denise. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> now she's getting to the fun part, right? This is what we always say: an embellishment part is the fun part. Yeah. So now I'm going to go back in and tighten this just a little bit more. Now that I have, I did lime green so you guys can see and kind of it coordinated with the sign a little bit better. And the fasteners that we sends with the signs, they are like these. Okay, what are they called, Steve? The, they're one inch commercial mounts. They're actually for zip ties. Right, so if you were to use these, you can push your pipe cleaner through and then Bend it twist, and it. twist it. Yep. Or they also go vertical yep. through the other side. They're made for zip ties, but they're perfect for pipe cleaners too. Yeah, I use these a lot to secure my wreaths in the bottom of the box when I ship them if I have a lot of like, if we do the beach ones and there's seashells out there. See, now I've defluffed my wreath. Okay. Well, you just gotta refluff it. Well, I'm gonna refluff it. So <laughs> that's. I think that's up, right? Yeah. That would be up. And then I'm going to yeah. go through really quick and snip all my pipe cleaners off because now I know which ones I don't need. How funny, I snipped that one already. I was like, who did that? No. So just because they're already twisted five times. I'll show you what I'm doing. So let me get this one done. I've got it zoomed in right now. I know, but I'll come around and show them. So I don't want to get burned by the glue gun. Okay, so here is my ribbon. It's already twisted five times around here. But if you're not sure, twist it a couple extra. And you're going to cut it right where the twist mark is. And then you're going to take it and you're going to tuck it right behind your ribbon and then you're going to reef it should go this way refluff out your ribbon this is that lovely satin that just does not want to do anything mm -hmm. but it feels so nice then you can push it this way and show them 
you can't even really see the pipe cleaners at all. And that's why you try when you're putting your wreath down, like here, I think we use beige. So you can see the beige in here. So by using the green, we don't see that. And I all I did, because I just wanted a visual, is I kind of just pushed them back and kind of hit them so I could look and go, do I like that? Yeah. So. And yes, yeah, she does a mock-up pretty much for every wreath. Yeah. She re that's what she tells everybody. If you're gonna do a wreath, kind of do a mock do a mock-up first to see if you like the colors and that's also the first question mm -hmm. I'll ask anyone who sends me stuff for help and they'll be like, I just don't understand what to do. Hi Mabel. Mabel said first time watching. I love it. Beautiful. Thank you, Mabel. Denise said I got to send some I gotta send you some clam chowder from the Splash Cafe. What is the Splash Cafe? I don't know, I've never heard of it. You can send me Must clam chowder. Must be some good clam chowder. No, I love clam chowder. We Charlene said, love, love, love the colors. Nice. Dawn said, for some reason, it's not showing on my link, but sold. Oh, then Maybe. somebody bought it. Somebody might have bought it. I can't check because my phone is right there. <laughs> Steve could check. He could go to Etsy and see if it's there. Denise said, hey, free shells at Pismo Beach. Free shells? Yeah, Pismo Beach has a ton of seashells. Oh, that's right. Yeah. God, we're so busy, though. Like, his parents are moving from Havasu to here. They're moving back to Southern California. Cause oh, Kathy said, I just bought it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. Dragonflies are very special in their heart, so it's going to Iowa. Aww. Okay, well then, <laughs> she gets extra kudos. She can tell me where she wants her dragonflies placed while I'm making it. Good night, bye. Good night, bye. I'll bye. be sending you a care package. Yep. Now I know I can. Don says no, she means she wants it. <laughs> you can message me. Don, you know where the sign's from. Yeah, or you can message me. We can chat. We can always look at doing one in a different color. Yeah, Don, she could always do one in maybe a different color for you. Um, you could always private message her. And then uh, Lee from Personally Yours said, thank you so much, Kat and Steve. She's got to run. Okay, thank you, Lee, for joining us and helping out. Hopefully, you'll get lots of orders now. But not too many tell you up at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's true. We might we might keep her pretty busy. <laughs> I know that's what my my ribbon lady said. She goes, as much as she sent me an email, she goes, I love you and I hate you, cat. <laughs> and I was like, what do they do? And she goes, I've been sitting here packaging ribbon since four o'clock in the morning. And I said, well, that's a good thing, right? You can have worse problems in the world. <laughs> She's like, yes, it's a good thing, but I didn't know, you know, she was just somebody I bought and we did an unpackaging video and other people went there because I said she's got great specialty ribbon. So mm -hmm. it works for me because all my wreaths are different. Mm -hmm. So, Don, like I said, if you want to do a custom order, just text message me. Message Kat. Yeah, but I like this one. These are my favorites. You could use similar colors. I can, but some of the ribbon I can't reorder. Yeah. Which is why I like just having enough. Because then it guarantees every customer gets that unique wreath. Yep. I know. Like everyone got got over all the Americana ones that we mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Just because I think it's it's not so much just patriotic, but it was year round. Yeah. Because a lot of people decorate in Americana. I know once our kids move out, that's what we're doing. Because mm -hmm. we still have teens running around our house so once they move out I will have my own craft room which <laughs> yeah. is nice yeah but we'll still have a guest bedroom for when they come visit or when we go visit them so I'm just snipping tacking pulling Don said okay okay thanks so she'll probably text message you okay she just said I want every wreath you make beautiful Aww, <laughs> thank you no, it's sad too because I have to. I'm making my dad one because my my dad's so nice. He he gives away everything that I make him. So we'll be making a navy wreath. I think we get the signs tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think from Amazon, and all my military signs are on Amazon. So if you want to order them, um, I can tell you the vets like the embossed signs better because they like the raised lettering. And I'm just going around fluffing. Make sure I cut all of these, pulling all of the 
threads up. Nope. One right here. So, um, yeah, my dad sells them to, he works at, not works, volunteers at Riverside National Cemetery. He represents the Navy on their honor guard, what are they, like ceremonies for the, yeah. the burials. For the, yeah, all the, the people who are buried at the cemetery. So he volunteers to represent the people who are getting a military burial. Mm -hmm. So he keeps selling all his. All the, all the veterans. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, I'm just going to make you one. It has <clears throat> to go on your door. You stop selling them. Victoria said, see, that's why you and Steve rock, selling a wreath before it's even finished. <laughs> that's awesome when that happens. But, you know, mainly she's doing the, the tutorial so you guys can see how she makes it. Yeah, it's always you trying guys to can find play something better. different. Like, yeah. I mean, I think we knocked out, we did the, the patriotic, although we haven't done our traditional one. We'll do that one probably next week or something. Yeah. I know we're going to do, well, we're doing the patriotic where everybody's going to make it. So it's already been put out there that if you buy three rolls of deco mesh, the 10 inch deco mesh, red, white, and blue, you can pick red, um, checkered, different colors, just those combinations, solid red, solid white solid blue or a combination thereof two coordinating ribbons that would go with that so you can go to Hobby Lobby Joann's Michaels and then if you want to do a sign pick up a sign or if you want to do fun embellishment picks like we have firecrackers and mm -hmm. the little glittery stars and stuff like that um, we're all gonna do a group um, create I think it's the last Friday in April I think that's the date I put up there mm -hmm. so the week before, I'll give you like all the dimensions to pre-cut and get your wreath frames up and ready. Mm -hmm. And even if you can't do a 14 inch wreath frame, I'll tell you how to wire up a 16 or an 18 inch if that's the way you want. And then what we're going to create can be used as a, a table centerpiece. Just like this could technically, like a, if you're a Seahawks fan, you could do the wreath just like this. Don't put the sign in it. And yeah. because it's got that hole in the middle, where is it? Let me show you what you can do. Believe it or not, with the wreath, that hole in the middle is big enough. They, if they had a helmet, they could put a helmet in the you middle could. too. You could. But look, you can also do this because there is a hole in the middle. You could do this and put your hurricane lamp in it. You could put a flameless candle. Um, yeah. We've done this at Christmas time. You can get one that's like blueberry colored or something. And how this is your centerpiece, you could put you know, whatever embellishments around the outside. This doesn't have to be just a wreath. This could be a table arrangement that yep. you could um, do. And Hobby Lobby, I think it's like $9 yep. for the hurricane piece. So yeah, that's something you can do. So let's add our dragonfly. Gail, Gail said, what's crazy is I've made a lot of wreaths for others, but the only thing that she has on her front door is a command strip to, to take uh, photos on. It's kind of like us too. Right up, right here. <laughs> Because every time I think about making one and I, I, I just put it up there just to see what happens, it sells and then I'm like, um, okay, so it's now past spring, we're moving into Mother's Day, Mother's Day is just a day, let's go patriotic. Hi Susie, I think it's Susie, it's Gordon Susie Medendrop, she said, hey from, from Michigan, beautiful wreath. Okay. And then Dawn said she got her two wreaths today and they're fabulous. Dawn. Dawn Cooper. Oh, okay. I had to remember, what did I send out? Because God was amazing last week. Were those the kits? Uh, no. Well, Dawn. I think Dawn bought a kit and a wreath, if I'm not mistaken. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a little dab of glue on the bottom because these little dragonflies are, right, um, they just have like the wire stuck into their little styrofoam. So I'm going to actually put a little dab of glue on him let that dry so his wire won't come undone and then we have this guy and they have like little glue the body right onto the yeah mesh, right? I, might, I might wire them so we'll look and see what we like they have little metal legs so you can bend them but I thought we would put one on the sign so there's like this limey green color guy and there's more of a darker oh, mossy got... green yeah, Don said she got two wreaths, so it must have been made of two wreaths. Oh, you know what it was? It was probably, it depends on who we get at the post office. There's one guy who will ship out our packages, no problem. 
and usually have a two or three day shipping window. And then there's some people at the post office that are like, no, we're going by the rules. Yeah. This is going to take you 10 or seven days. So I don't like the black guy. He just doesn't look very real to me. Patty said, how long does it take you to make one like that? It's beautiful. Um, let's see. What is it? Well, I've been 630. talking. 6.30. Usually an hour and a half. Well, by the time we prep it and cut all the ribbon yeah, and Yeah, it's three and a half from start to finish. Yeah, about three hours. So I like these guys because they have bigger legs. I'm going to pull his legs out. So Merlene said a flooding flooding candle would also look nice. What's a flooding candle? I think it's the tall, really tall, straight. Oh. You can put all kinds of stuff in there. I mean, you could probably put like a fun little cute snack jar or something in there. So you have these little guys. They're missing their eyes. They don't have like eyes. So, Kathy bought this right. Kathy, are you still on? She. Oh, Dawn bought the spring lavender wreath. Spring lavender. Oh, okay. I have to keep remembering because we keep we keep tagging our wreaths so that I actually have materials yeah. list. Well, plus you're making so many of them. Okay, so I'm gonna let those guys dry. So the, these guys have spring. like clear. Okay clear things but I thought we would put at least one on the sign and I'm just like kind of playing with the placement and they're kind of hard to see so I'm looking to put the green ones maybe more on the blue so that you can actually see them so yeah, that that's pretty. they um I know he's yeah, got I like his it little, like that one that one looks pretty like his little metal legs yeah and then the green ones maybe like off to here I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I can see okay like maybe put one here. We'll put him there. And we should put one on the side. One over here somewhere. Okay. So let me just kind of lay him there. He's still got his glue. He's still dry. Is he? Yeah. And maybe one over here on the blue. Just so there's yeah. there's one. I like those. What do you guys think? You can do a small one on the sign or no? Um, I have one on the sign already. I'm gonna try to just like lightly place him where we'd want him to go. He'd go down in there a little further. Yeah. I'd have to push his, his little stick in further. Put one somewhere in here, one there, one there. So I'm hoping they'll stay. Eee. This one's flipping. Yeah. Just like so. What do you think? Looks good. Okay. So for the guys that don't have little some of them don't even have little wires Legs. yeah I'm just gonna kind of put a little dab of glue on him never wanted to hold his legs on and I'm gonna put him here off to the side I'm trying to decide where I want him to go Kim said how she had to run a lot of Hobby Lobby and just got back oh I didn't put enough on there the reflux get beautiful get reflux I've never heard of that reflux reflux then Nancy said, yeah, she likes it. And then uh, Dale asked, where did you buy the dragonflies? So the bigger dragonflies are from Hobby Lobby. These ones, and then these ones are from Joanne's. And the smaller ones are from Joanne's. Yeah. And they did have some different colors, I think. They were mainly green and, and blue, though. But I think I shared check. a picture on, on the main page today. I said, look, I didn't realize that Hobby Lobby carried all this stuff. So what's nice about the ones that have the metal legs is you can make them go pointed. And then when they go through the decomash, you just bend their legs back in so gotcha. they'll stay. Kim so. said that was actually totally wrong. Sorry. She hit the mic by a mistake. Looks awesome. Oh. The reflux. So just typo. Gotcha. So we're going to take this guy. I'm going to snip his wire off so he's not quite so long. Don, good night. She said, got to run. Have a great night. I'm leaving for North Carolina tomorrow. Where's she so. leave? Don? Don Cobra. Oh. She says she's leaving for North Carolina tomorrow. Gotcha. Well, have a safe travel and have a great weekend. So we're going to attach him. And Corinne said, thank you. I learned a few more things tonight. Have a great weekend. Thank you. All we're doing is attaching our dragonflies. And then we're pretty much done. Yeah. I'm just deciding where they need to go so that they will stay where they need to be. You gonna, you're going to hook them in? Yeah. He's actually really easy to hook. Really simple. I just want them to stay 
in the position that I want him to be in. Yeah. Okay. He's safe. I'm just fastening this guy in. Janine said, oh my gosh, I love this. Because her last name is Dragon. Aww. Dragonfly wreath. Okay. That guy's in, that guy's on, and we are done. So this is our dragonfly wreath. And that's what you can do with it. Yeah. And if you want, you can add other things. Like Steve and I were thinking, what if we add, I mean, they have hummingbirds, they have butterflies. We had thought about putting a couple butterflies in here too, but because this is a dragonfly themed wreath with just the dragonfly themed sign, I think we're going to keep it like that. Yeah. I'll probably take his little bow and kind of hide the, the pipe cleaner a little bit more. All right. But that's it. Do you guys have any questions at all to join the private group? If you want to be part of our uh, Wednesday night group, yep. like I said, Wednesday nights don't have to be the night that work. You can always come back and watch the video. This week we're doing a wreath tutorial. We're either going to do, we might do something floral, like a grapevine floral this week. Um, oh, Sue just uh, chimed in and said she found the window pane at Paper Mart. Oh, Paper and Mart she, has this? Yeah, and she put the SKU number on there too. So awesome. awesome. Thank you. Awesome, Sue. Thank you for doing that for everybody. So you guys See? can go watch it and order your window pane mesh because order it it's, from, a, it's a, out of stock everywhere else. Yep, if you order want it from that. Paper Mart. And you can use this for like your ocean reefs. You can use this for like, um, I don't know, to me it looks lake. like seaweed. Yeah, yeah like well, a lake wreath. And then um, let me show you because I'll put this on the door. I'm going to take this one off, move it to the side, and I'll put this one up to show you what it looks like. This is your average size door, so that's what it looks like on the door. So I am putting it up. Okay. That's what it looks like on the door. Yep. So it looks really super cute. And then this the crazy giveaway everyone was talking about that we did at Crafty Barrel. We'll probably do another one too because they're getting new new stuff in there. But um, this was Deborah's sign, I believe. Deborah yep. one. Yep. This is the barefoot friends are the best. So it's all like made out of sand. sand. So yep. it's actually kind of cool sand on burlap. And this was Cracker Barrel's twelve dollars and ninety nine cents. Yep. And then they got these ones in, so we picked these up for Mother's Day. And, and this is the one that Marie won. Marie won, yep. And this says, don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. So I'm going to do these all with like pink roses and like um, the antique dusty rose kind of colors. And this one's $7.99 at Cracker Barrel. So keeping costs down make things, you know, really affordable for us crafters. So... If you guys don't have any other questions, I will let you go. Have a great weekend. Um, well, Peggy brought up a point. She said, "She said it looks like you need a business license or a tax ID for Paper Mart. Are they a... Uh... Mm, I don't know. But you can get your federal tax ID number online. It's, it's like, free. It's snap and it's free. Yep. So all it does is flag the federal government that you're crafting. And you'll have to put in there, like, how much money do you think you're going to make? maybe like I don't know put a hundred bucks hundred fifty dollars yeah and it'll allow you to you can even take it in California we have to print out a resale certificate for every single place like Michael's Hobby Lobby Joann's um, Sue, Sue said you don't need one not a crap not she, a she just said no no okay so you don't but I know places like um, what's it huh. called well I'll have to check into it because Patty Patty said you need a business license, but then Sue said no. So we'll have to check into it. But like I said, and then those, are, those are, well, business license, depending upon your city and county, could cost you some money. But make sure you're going through your county or yeah. city's um, website because there's a lot of companies out there that will try to charge you to to get a business license or a seller's permit or a tax ID. Yeah. And for a seller's permit and a tax ID number, it's free from 
your city and your state. So nobody should be charging you for that. So Marie, Tanya, and Linda both verified you don't need anything to buy from Paper Mart. Okay. So you guys you know, should be good. Well, like places like what is it, Craig Bachman? Yeah. I think you have to yeah, have you, you have to have a reseller's number or a um, federal tax ID number, but that's it. It's free. Mm -hmm. So just put you're gonna maybe make two hundred dollars worth of wreaths this year. And if you don't sell anything, you don't sell anything, but you're able to buy your um, products at cost. You don't have to pay the tax. Yep. So, and then you might get them a little bit cheaper. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us and make sure you guys have a great weekend. These are going to go out on Monday. Thank you to those that participated and you never know when we'll have a pop-up impromptu uh, giveaway. Yep. It's fun to do. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Sunday at five.